The interesting thing was I was Nikki Who for a lot of the rates. I didn't have any name ID. I didn't have any money. Uh, but what we did have was we had a conservative message. I had a lot of passion, and we had a grassroots movement. And so as I was going across, <coughs> none of the other candidates were acknowledging me. And then they started to see movement. And the second that Rasmussen said that we were number one in the polls, within about three or four days, I, I looked at Michael and I, we celebrated for all of five minutes and then I said, this is gonna hurt. And I knew something had to happen. They couldn't let it stand. And within four or five days, it was everything under the sun that came out. And what they don't understand is that only motivated me to fight more because it was everything that's wrong with politics. Politics is the art of distraction. And that's what they were trying to do. And what I was going to show them was I was not going to be distracted. I told them that it was absolute lies, it was false, and I also told them this is exactly why we needed to look at somebody new for governor. We like to go into different tribes and play left versus right, Democrat versus Republican, conservative versus liberal. And if there's anything the last 24 months, 26 months have taught me is that politics and any sort of allegiance to schools of thought or party is all a distraction. So I was Googling something the other day and I was so desperate for an answer that I even checked the second page of the Google search results. <laughs> now, presumably, you're really paying attention to me now, because research shows that people tend to remember and pay attention to things more that stand out to them as being interesting or funny. Now, according to Michael Griffin, an associate professor of media and cultural studies, this is how my grandparents got their news. Now, they could assume that the media was unbiased because journalistic integrity was one of the most important things at their time. On top of this, it was considered a public service, and honestly, they just didn't have many ways of getting news. This is how my parents got their news. Increasingly, we started to move towards a more 24 hours type of news, which led to an increase in competition to be the trusted news source but also decrease the time for fact-checking. And this is how today's generation gets their news. We have so many options, and they're nearly all free. And because of this, many news sources began to pick their spot along the liberal to conservative continuum and the continuum of presenting complete facts all the way to complete information fabrication. And with all of these vying for our very limited attention, we moved from a model where news could be assumed to be inherently truthful and unbiased to one which enabled fake news. You know, fake news, those false stories with the intent of influencing our, uh, our opinions and beliefs and are presented as facts. Yeah, those ones. Well, because of this, instead of news being the product, our attention became the product in the form of views, clicks, and likes. I mean, if we see a viral story, about a shark swimming down a freeway after a hurricane, we can probably assume it isn't true and it's just someone having a little fun with some Photoshop. <laughs> so now we're, now we're aware of fake news and we're learning to be discerning about it. So problem solved, right? What if I told you it's actually worse than this? What if fake news isn't all we need to be aware of? What about all the information we are being manipulated into believing is true because it's interesting or funny and our guards are down. Let me set the scene for you. You've had a long day, you come home, you want to sit down, relax, and be entertained. Your guard is down. Suddenly, any information or opinions you may come across could just plant the seed of an idea in your head without you even realizing it. Jimmy Kimmel, Jimmy Fallon, are they all named Jimmy? <laughs> Samantha B, Stephen Colbert, and John Oliver, all very funny people. But we need to be aware of how these late night talk show hosts are influencing our political beliefs and, dare I say it, manipulating us. In fact, 
Take Jimmy Kimmel's tearful and personal resistance to a governmental health care plan on his talk show, which led to a very unusual situation. The president pushing for the plan, yet facing his greatest opposition from, wait for it, a late night talk show host. We, the youth of today, are increasingly getting our information from non-news sources. In fact, 2018 research from strategic communications firm Broder Partners reveals that nearly half of Gen Z ranked YouTube as their first or second most important source of news. Millennials didn't even come far behind that with 44%, whereas the clear preference for Gen X and Boomers remain traditional sources, such as newspapers and magazines. The study also revealed that, no surprise, entertainment and engagement are becoming increasingly more important. In fact, the younger you are, the more you consider the news you consume on a daily basis to be entertainment versus validated information. Only about 50% of boomers will say that the majority of the media they consume is entertainment. But that number jumps to the mid-70s when talking to millennials and Gen Z. Thus, the need to be discerning is higher than ever before, as the content is interesting and funny, and our fake news alarm bells probably aren't even on. In fact, it isn't just comedy shows that we need to be aware of. This applies to any information that's coming in where we might be forming opinions on politics or news without being aware of it. For example, this could be in an article on your social media feed, such as on Instagram, maybe in a conversation with a family member or a friend. It could be on a YouTube video, and even all those Netflix shows you binge. So how can we combat having our opinions manipulated by interesting or funny information that is coming in without us realizing that our guards are down? Here are three simple tips. Number one, start by recognizing when a video or a news source you're watching or looking at is not a trusted one. Just a reminder, the comedians themselves will insist that they are not real news. I mean, they're in the comedy business, for crying out loud. And they are not held to any type of journalistic standards. Number two, get a balanced view. When you find yourself forming a certain opinion on someone, make sure you seek out contrary videos to uh, on both sides, those for and against that person, to get a more rounded view. And finally, you can always leverage existing sources that are aimed specifically at us, the youth of today, to combat fake news. For example, BBC has an interactive choose-your-own-adventure game that allows people our age to make decisions about what sources, political claims, social media comments, and photos can be trusted, and which ones might be fake news. In a world where the business model is increasingly becoming to capture our very limited attention, it's become more important than it ever has been to check that second page of the Google search results.